When adding DAN to Domain Manager to a DAN system, we'll need to consider how to group our devices into domains. DAN to domains, like we said earlier, are just a logical group of devices where we can manage and apply access rights to the different users in the system. They typically represent locations, buildings, zones, functions, or whatever makes sense to you. A domain is isolated from other domains by default in terms of device visibility and clocking. There is also no sharing of audio between devices enrolled in domains and outside of the DDM system, in what we call the unmanaged domain. So using the same example of the documents, pictures, and music folders in a computer that we mentioned in the level three certification course, we can do the same with devices in different domains. We do this in order not to have a visually cluttered Dante controller, but rather something more structured like this. There are some considerations when creating domains that we must remember. One of them is that Dante devices can only be enrolled in one domain at a time. Fortunately, there is a feature called shared audio groups that can be used to overcome this default behavior. But don't worry, we will cover this topic in the next chapter. Another consideration is who needs access to these devices. Am I giving my users the ability to unenroll and enroll devices from domains themselves? Can they change clocking, other device settings, and subscriptions? And finally, something very important to remember is that devices, once enrolled, cannot share audio back to the unmanaged domain. There is a question that we get asked a lot, and that is if a domain is the same as a subnet. Well, the answer is no. There isn't any relationship between a domain and a subnet. As we said before, a domain in Dante terminology is a logical group of devices, irrespective of their network segregation, IP addressing scheme, or architecture. A subnet, as you know, is a segmented piece of a large network where devices are partitioned using a process called subnetting. Here are several examples. In the first example, we have multiple domains configured in a single subnet, with the DDM server also residing in the same subnet. This is the easiest way to deploy a DDM server. The second example shows a configuration where each of the four meeting rooms devices are located in different subnets, with the domains configured accordingly. Note that the DDM server is also residing in the same subnet as the devices in domain one, meeting room one. From a networking perspective, these subnets could also be in different VLANs. Remember, VLANs and subnets are two different things. The next example shows two domains created, East Meeting Rooms and West Meeting Rooms, with each having devices residing in different subnets. Each Dante domain can support up to 20 different subnets. And the final example shows the Dante Domain Manager server located in a different subnet than the Dante devices. This is how we typically see a majority of DDM installations where devices reside in multiple subnets and the DDM server is located in a data center. On these next slides, we have a few more examples. This first one is a convention center that can be best divided up into North Meeting Rooms and South Meeting Rooms domains. The reason for doing it this way, as opposed to creating a domain per individual room, is that these rooms are sharing a common DSP. This eliminates the need to create a shared audio group for these rooms and therefore simplifying the configuration. Most meeting rooms typically require minimal changes once they are set up. The auditorium, however, needs its own domain, since there are different events happening in it on a daily or weekly basis. Also note that the AV team that works in this space may be different from the team who handle the meeting spaces. The auditorium may also have external teams needing to make certain changes to the system. DDM allows you to customize all of this. Now let's take a look at another project, a college or university. Here we have multiple things going on in the different buildings and facilities around the campus. We have a stadium, classrooms, a broadcast center, and a theater. Before DDM, each one of these spaces 
may have had their own dedicated Dante network, requiring the AFB staff to run out to each building at the first sign of trouble. With DDM, they can remotely manage and monitor all of these systems, and even allow for audio to be shared between the different spaces. Here, there is a lot more flexibility for setting up domains. You may decide to put all of the devices in the stadium in a single domain, and you can do the same for the theater. Or you can take a different approach. For example, let's assume the stadium has a lot of Dante devices, like amplifiers and PoE speakers for the public address system. We could be looking at hundreds of devices. Now, if all these devices were in a single domain, then the controller would be very busy. It might make sense to break things up into multiple domains, right? We could have one domain for the PA head end, like I.O. devices, mixer, DSP, domains for the different amplifier equipment rooms, a press box domain, private boxes, and so on. By breaking up alert system into domains, we can make managing and troubleshooting alert system really easy. This method may require using the Share Audio Group's feature, covered in the next chapter, if there is a need for sharing audio between these domains. Unlike the meeting rooms in the last example, the classrooms in this building each have their own DSP and can function independently of each other. So you can make each classroom their own domain. If you go this route, where you may end up with a large number of domains for a single building, it is good practice to have a naming convention that makes logical sense. It also means that they can group together nicely in the DDM browser interface. Finally, for the broadcast facility, let's say you have two studios that also share a live room. Here, you would need to decide if you want to create a single domain for the three spaces, or create a domain for each space and use the Share Audio Group feature to send channels from the live room to each studio. Share audio groups are a great way of keeping the studios completely separated in Dante Controller. This is especially handy if, say, there are students or interns running the studio, because Share audio groups will allow them only to see the channels they need from the live room. Now that we have covered some of the design principles in setting up domains, let's get into some hand-on activities. Let me show you how to create and delete a domain in DDM you will see that it is a very simple process. If you remember, when a Dante system grows larger and larger, using DDM and creating domains helps simplify hard to read Dante controller views, from something that looks like this to this. So once we are here in the DDM dashboard, we just navigate to the domains page and click the add domain button. We can name domains whatever we want and repeat the process until we have the number of domains we need. Let's name the first one as Business Center Ballroom. We are going to create three additional domains. The Lobby, Business Center Meeting Rooms, and Campus Auditorium. If I realized that I created an unnecessary domain or that the system requirements changed, I can easily delete any of them. For example, let's delete the Lobby domain. All I have to do is highlight the domain and click Delete. You can also rename domains if you want. If you hover near the name, there will be a little pencil where you can edit the name. Let's do it for this one and change it to Campus Theater instead of Auditorium. Now, the next step is moving the devices to the domains we have just created. If we move to the Devices page, you will see all of our devices in a section called Unmanaged. But what is this section? If you remember a traditional network without DDM, all of the devices are shown at the same time in Dante Controller. But when you start using Dante Domain Manager, those devices are shown in a group label unmanaged. An unmanaged Dante network consists of Dante devices in one or more subnets that are not enrolled in a domain yet. They are not managed by the Dante Domain Manager. If you take a look at it closely, you will see the Dante devices are listed by their respective subnet. You can view these devices in Dante Controller as well. If we open it up, the first thing we notice is that we do not see all of the devices, only some of them. Any guesses as to why this is happening? If you guessed, 
This is because we only see the devices that are on the same subnet that we are connected to. Then you are spot on. It should be noted that the Dante Domain Manager several places all automatically discover devices that support DDM in the unmanaged domain. If a device is not automatically discovered, we have a very helpful feature in Dante Controller called Connect Devices to DDM slash Dante Cloud. So if there are one or more devices that don't appear in DDM, but does appear in Dante Controller, then all we have to do is select that option from the Devices menu, and then select the device or devices that we want to appear in DDM, and then press OK, and boom, they are discovered. So how do I move or enroll devices into domains once they were discovered by the Dante Domain Manager server? Well, there are multiple ways to do that. The first method is to simply go to the domain page, select the domain where we plan to move the devices, and then select the Enroll Devices option. It will send you to Enroll Devices page on the devices. Clicking on Add Devices will give you the list of all of them that you can then enroll. I will fast forward this section because I have a lot of them, and once you have them all selected, just click the Enroll button and that's it. Alternatively, you can navigate to the Device Page section. If we have already named the devices based on intended location, we can use the search bar to filter the results. For example, if we type meeting rooms, we see the devices that are intended for the meeting room domain. We select the devices we would like to move and when we scroll down, we will see the enroll option. Clicking on enroll will take us to the same section as before. We then select the domain and click on enroll. It should be noted that you can enroll one or many devices at the same time with these first two options. You can also achieve the same results by clicking on the Enroll Devices option at the bottom of the device's domain list. A cool tip is that we can use Shift and Control to select multiple devices. For any enrolling option we just seen, Dante Domain Manager automatically makes all the appropriate settings. During the enrollment process, the devices reclock and we will have a brief moment of our interruption. That's why we recommend you to not enroll devices into a domain when the devices or system is being used. Also, when you enroll devices into domains, they will keep all of their settings and recreate all of their subscriptions. The only exceptions are the preferred leader and sync to external clocking options. This will be reset. During the enrollment, a new clock leader will be elected. So if you had a device set as the preferred leader in the unmanaged domain, you will need to recheck this, okay? Well, one other extremely important thing to remember is to not check the clear the configuration on the devices on the confirmed device enrollment pop-up. Selecting this will clear the configuration, whipping out all of the subscriptions, channel labels, and other settings on the devices. Just simply ignore that checkbox and click OK. This will keep you from having to redo all of the device names, channel labels, uh, subscriptions, and other settings. They will just work as soon as you enroll the devices in the domain. If I look in the device list now, we'll see all of the devices are in their own domain. And if we take a look in Dante Controller, we will see that our devices have moved out from the unmanaged space to the domains we've just created. The devices in the bathroom, the devices for the meeting rooms, theater, etc. But what happens if our devices are not being discovered? How do I enroll them into domains? Well, there are two options for that. If we go to our domain page and then select the domain we want to add a device, then click on Enroll Devices, you can choose the Enroll by IP Address option. There you can manually type the IP address of the device or devices, and the DDM will now find or push the enrollment to the devices on the network. The other option is to upload a CSV file with all of the IP addresses from the devices you want to be discovered and enrolled into a domain. To unenroll devices that are already in a domain, it's very simple. Just go to the Devices section in the main menu, expand the relevant domain, click the device name you want to unenroll, 
and click on Enroll from the Domain Enrollment area. Another way to do it is to select the devices listed in the Domain on the Devices page and drag and drop the Enroll devices to the Unmanaged Domain. You can also easily unenroll all devices from the domain from the respective Domain Details page. But what happens if we remove a device from the network without first being properly unenrolled from a domain? Well, they will not work in a different network because the device still remembers that it is in a domain. So this means that it will require a reset of their domain credentials before they can be deployed somewhere else. Let's take a look at the clear domain credentials process. First, we must isolate the device from the rest of the Dante network, whether that means connecting it directly to our computer or connecting it to a switch with just the device and the computer. Another option would be to put it on a VLAN that has only the computer and the device. Once isolated, you will see that the device will appear in that the controller. This can take up to two minutes, so be patient. When it shows up, we will double click on the device name so that it opens the device view pop-up window. Then in the device menu, click clear domain credentials. Once it has opened the new window, you will finally have to press the clear config button. It is also a good idea to reboot the device before using it in a new Dante system. With that, we come to the end of our lesson on setting up and managing devices.